In the simulator, Martin Alder recreates the known technical failures on flight 447. He wants to know if two experienced pilot instructors can maintain speed and avoid a stall using standard operating procedure. The pilots don't know what they are about to face. Like flight 447, they are cruising at 35,000 feet at night over the ocean. Alder unleashes a storm. All right, gonna look for that one, so now activating. Thunder clouds loom ahead on the radar. The captain plans a detour and prepares for turbulence. So turbulence has to be then I'm selecting decimal 76. As is likely on flight 447, the pilot selects a slightly lower speed to reduce stress on the aircraft. Auto thrust automatically reduces engine power. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, the captain is speaking. We are uh, just approaching an area where there are a few uh, rain showers around. We've put the seatbelt sign on for approximately 10 minutes or so. As they edge around the storm, Alder triggers the critical moment of flight 447. He fails all three airspeed indicators. OK, we have a NAV ADR-1 fault. We have unreliable airspeed. The automatic flight control systems shut down. We're flying no order pilot or port thrust. If their actual airspeed rises or falls by as little as 10 knots, they could suffer a catastrophic loss of control. But the pilot uses standard procedures learned in training. He moves the throttle levers to set thrust at exactly 85%. And I'm selecting, I've got 85% set. Then he raises the elevators to pitch the nose up at precisely five degrees. With engines at 85% power and five degrees upward pitch, the aircraft should always settle at the same safe speed. It's quite possible to fly the aircraft to actually quite high standards of accuracy, something in the region of about five knots or so of the, of the desired target speed would be quite achievable for most crews. Without airspeed indicators, pitch and power is a pilot's lifeline. These pilots ignore any fault messages until they are safely in control. Got five degrees on the standby, four degrees on the other. Flying the airplane is the prime objective. No matter how attractive the messages might be to anyone on a flight deck, you both concentrate on ensuring that the person who should be flying the airplane is flying it and flying it in the manner which is safe. OK, so we've got what I think is basic control of the attitude. We're bumping a little bit with the weather, Check. but generally that's safe. With no reliable airspeed indicators, maintaining pitch and power can get them to the nearest airport. The emergency is over. That's it. Finish. Martin Alder's simulation shows that a safe speed can be maintained, even if all three PITO probes fail. So what could have stopped the crew of Flight 447 from using this technique. Airbus pilot John Cox believes he has identified the answer. If they were just entering an area of choppy air, they may very well have been slowing the airplane down. When Flight 447 first enters the storm, standard procedure suggests they would reduce speed. So auto thrust decreases engine power automatically. But the pilots don't receive one important visual signal from the thrust levers. 
the thrust levers themselves, the throttles, don't move, unlike some other airplanes where you can feel the throttle in your hand moving. With Airbus aircraft, that throttle doesn't move with auto thrust engaged, so you have to look at specific engine power indications. The power indication is displayed here on the central control panel. But if auto thrust switches off while the engines are in low power, the crew might lose track of the low thrust level. If you're very task saturated, your concentration is going to be directly in front of you. What's the power output of the engines? You're going to have to physically turn your attention and look to the center console area. This is not going to be done as frequently as looking at, at the things right in front of you. It, it's certainly going to be in the scan. The question is how often. The aircraft is now nearer the lower end of its safe speed range. But overloaded by fault warnings, the crew might not realize they need to increase power. Was this crew one that was very attentive and picked up this information very early? Were they very slow to pick up the information? We don't know. Were the demands so high that they were unable to, uh, to keep up with it? We don't know. But Tony Cable finds support for this theory. In 10 previous incidents of PITO probe failure, the crew fails to immediately control thrust. In quite a number of them, it's clear that the crews were very slow to get onto manual throttle operation. In five cases, crews don't take control of thrust for more than 60 seconds. For flight 447, that would mean rapid deceleration and the risk of a sudden stall. 10 to 15 knots would not be unusual. If you decelerate at a knot a second, it's 15 seconds. The aircraft could slow down to a much lower speed and you could approach the stall quite quickly in that manner at altitude. There is a good possibility um, that at some point in the last four minutes that there was a stall event. The result, a rapidly descending aircraft. However, a stall is not necessarily fatal. There are recovery techniques. The procedure is pull thrust on both engines, reduce the pitch attitude, and the aircraft will then resume normal flight. By pitching the nose down, the pilot restores smooth airflow over the wings and escapes the stall. But a stall can be an extreme event. If they were uh, in a condition that it fully stalled, oftentimes uh, when the nose breaks, they'll roll off on a wing. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a pretty uh, aggressive maneuver when the airplane does that. That could mean that flight 447 violently rolled to one side, more like a fighter jet than a passenger airliner. Most airline pilots have limited experience dealing with this type of event. And complex automatic flight controls mean they do little hands-on flying. For Tony Cable, this reliance on automation highlights a larger flight safety issue. In recent years, the single biggest cause of accidents has become loss of control accidents. Modern aircraft are packed with automated flight controls. But are these automatic systems creating modern pilots who are ill-equipped to recover manual control in a crisis? It has raised the question about whether the situation is actually being made worse by the increase in automation whereby crews uh, don't get a great deal of opportunity to manually fly the aircraft. Standard airline flight simulators don't have the freedom of movement to recreate a severe stall. 